I'm Al Gore. I used to be the next president of the United States of America. Yes, that was Al Gore's climate change movie, Inconvenient Truth, way back in 2006. Now Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is out with a new climate change documentary of her own. It turned out to be a big flop, though. The film, called To the End, hit theaters over the weekend, and it played on 120 screens, but reportedly drew in only $80 per theater. Hmm, that's paltry. Here's a peek. Some of us have to actually live the future that you all are setting on fire. We're going to make historic investments and we'll seize the opportunity. We got the candidate that was nominated to come to us. We're either going to go out in a blaze of glory or we're going to win what we want. America has faced threats before and come out stronger. Well, she'll have enough birthdays to be able to run in 2024. How many Democrats are campaigning? Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> was that for me or her? No, that was, that was for that <laughs> god-awful stinky trailer. Um, <laughs> AOC, no one cares. They, they really, that people are trying to figure out how they're going to buy Christmas presents for their kids. Yeah. They're not going to be beaten into submission by climate hysterics. We've heard all of this. We've seen the overblown statistics. We all care about the planet. We want the earth to heal. Uh, having said that, she is not a good messenger. And that is not mm. at the top of people's lists. If people want to go to a movie, they don't want to go feel guilty about something. <laughs> they want escapism. They want to escape from her. <laughs> oh, I feel like we should end the show right now. I think so. It's been great to have you. <laughs> wow. Charles. You want me to follow that up, huh? Yeah, good luck. I will say, though, I love the part about nobody cares because there's a gigantic movement behind this, using this as a coattails, this ESG movement, right? Uh, uh, and... It's one of these things that's so powerful, particularly in Europe. Uh, trillions of dollars right now are welded to this thing, and it will make or break industries. One of the reasons oil prices are up so high, you can't raise money for oil wells. You know, they talk about not drilling. Yeah. And so nobody cares, and yet they found a way to sort of make this, this movement so powerful. And the notion is that mankind is bad. It always boils down to one thing. Get rid of people, the planet will flourish, and that's the end. Unless they live south of the border. <laughs> no. yeah. that, that's oh, I'm just stating the facts. I mean, they, 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 there is a lot of, of, you know, population coming. Yeah, no, so I know, I know. But that, they, that all they, people the crux are of this thing, though, goes back to the 1800s. Part of their plan. There's, and listen, how many times have Maltus and so many people told us we're going to destroy the planet, we'll all be dead, and it's backfired so many times. We wouldn't have the yeah, Irish. Yeah, but most of those but people have the last name Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> or Cameron. <laughs> Well, those, those are the great movie makers. Uh, you know, I don't know that you can put uh, Ocasio-Cortez in that league just yet, but the message doesn't change. And, and, and I just, it's amazing to me how much power they've been able to extract from this fear. And by the way, Al Gore, I mean, uh, when was his time stamp? Weren't we so already supposed to be gone? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I thought we were supposed to be gone years, by 2010, like 20, ago. whatever. Something like that. Yeah. I lost track. Jackie. I, you know, I'm willing as a taxpayer and an American citizen to do my part to help with climate change. The problem that I have is how much money we're spending on it right now. We're literally setting our money on fire because it's not having an impact when you think about the other polluters across the planet that are not playing ball with us. So until we're able to cooperate with people, take the time to get the technology right, make sure that the batteries aren't destructive, that they don't explode, that they, you know, we have a place to properly um, put them when we're finished with them or that their life uh, span is long enough to run the automobile. And when we can take that and do it all across the world, then that's mm -hmm. when we do it. But trying to do it here and telling the American taxpayer um, the Inflation Reduction Act, which had so many climate provisions in it, you know, we just want to spend your money on this right now. It's ridiculous when people are literally having trouble, as you said, putting gifts under the tree, food on the table, and gas in the car right now. We've got well, to strip mine the world, by the way, to meet these agendas. We have to strip mine the entire planet. The best investment right now is copper. We've got to strip mine the world because so we've got to true. put together these batteries well, that we can't dispose of. Look at what's happening, Emily, in Switzerland, where just this week they announced that, no, you cannot this winter plug in your electric cars. Nah. And with all the incentivizing that we're doing in this country per this White House and administration, we could get there, too. Our grids are also 80 percent or north of that efficient because of fossil fuel and coal. So we're not there either. And if we need those 
uh, energy sources for other things like heating and driving, we're also depleting our grids. We'll get to a point like they did in California this summer where you can't plug in okay. your electric vehicle. That's right. And the fragility of our electric grid cannot be overstated. Uh, this weekend at the Pennsylvania State Police Lower Paxton Police Department car show I was at, I was talking to a power plant uh, um, manager and she was so enlightening and confirming that fragility the vulnerability of it and the fact that there was no transition provided for by this None. administration as they chirped to us about their ideology you guys though this movie made nine thousand dollars on opening day weekend wow. nine thousand dollars and under biden's america what does that actually mean what five hundred dollars what a joke last time i checked the people in queens voted her in to enact policy. I would think to maybe preserve jobs, maybe even grow jobs to ensure their tax dollars are spent keeping them safe and secure and provided for. Not to narrate at the shrillest decibel level possible some hyper hysteric <laughs> climate change documentary. Get out of here, social media influencers, and get a seat available for an actual congressperson. By the way, 120 screens it opened on. I think there are that many in the studio right now. <laughs> right, I'm sure it's some, some fraternity house just hosted it all. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.